Hey everyone, I'm Christopher Stone, owner and operator of SickyJama.com, and I wanted to put out this video about, you know, the big controversy, Jeffree Star's hush money payments to certain people, and I promise I am going to give you all that, but first, I think, because uh, I might be unfamiliar to a lot of people, we're going to kind of go into a little bit of the backstory, bear with me, especially if you're already <laughs> well versed in all this. So, Sticky Drama was a blog about Stickham. What's Stickham? Well, Stickham is gone now. Uh, at least the American version is gone. The Japanese version still exists, but no one <laughs> in the scene uses it. Stickham was the first live streaming video network. It really peaked after MySpace, but before Facebook. And that's where a lot of the just best and brightest of the scene kids of MySpace kind of navigated to and thrived for a brief window of time. Jeffree Star was one of those people, and that's why I blogged about him way back then, and that's why I have blogged about him recently. Now, um, unfortunately, Stickham went out of business a few years ago. Uh, I kept Sticky Drama around just because, you know, a lot of the people who were popular on Stickham back then, we called them entertainers, now you would call them influencers, they didn't just disappear, they're still around. People like Jeffrey are still around. So I do update Sticky Drama every now and then with something really big, like this. So let's fast forward to today in 2020. Now, I'm sure you're very familiar with this image. This is the big insider expose about Jeffree Star and his hush money payments. So let me just kind of recap this. Now, Gage Arthur first came to me. He was familiar with me and he had been with Jeffree Star as well back in the day. I listened to him. I investigated. I asked Jeffree's people for comment and I published the story. Then Insider kind of elaborated and continued a more in-depth investigation and analysis. Uh, in the middle of that process, Gage retracted his statement and refused to cooperate. And Gage wasn't the only one. Insider, though, they ended up posting their expose anyway with the explanation about the retraction because some of Insider's sources, although uh, they were none of my sources, but some of Insider's sources had refused one of these $10,000 hush money payments. So the whole situation sort of ended on a cliffhanger. You know, I mean, Insider published their allegations, but meanwhile, the main victim of the story was saying nothing happened. And there's really no proof either way. Until now. Because I posted it on StickyJama.com. So let's talk about that check in a little bit more detail. And if you want to follow along visually, uh, you can go to StickyJama.com or my Twitter. I've kind of posted... Uh, higher quality images of this. Now, so on here's the top portion, the cashier's check. It's the $45,000 figure purchased by Scott C. Andrews. Now, who is that? That's not Jeffree Star. Well, Scott C. Andrews, according to multiple public records, you know, corporate filings and that sort of thing, he is the CFO or chief financial officer of Jeffree Star Cosmetics. All right, so on September 28th, he purchased this cashier's check in the amount of $45,000. Now, I did blur this on my website and in uh, images that I've you know, publicly kind of distributed, but uh, there is a bank account number on here. And I blurred it out, but when I called Bank of America and asked for them to verify, hey, is this check real? Uh, you know, I don't want to give a lecture on uh, banking privacy laws, and I don't really know them. Uh, but all Bank of America would do will verify is whether the 
account number on the check is a real Bank of America account number? And they said, yes, it is. So I think in the whole context of things, that is more than enough objective proof. I know I'm not everyone's favorite guy. So hey, you don't have to take my word for it. Take Bank of America's word for it, okay? I am not the Prince of Darkness who has control over Bank of America. If push comes to shove, I can at least reveal the account number portion and everyone on earth with an internet connection can verify that this is a real Bank of America cashier's check. All right. So let's move on to the other portion of the settlement agreement, the non-disclosure agreement, or the NDA. Now I have Gage Arthur's settlement agreement right here. Now uh, this is going to require a little bit of an explanation, and I want to preface this by saying that I am no angel myself and I am no advocate for the Me Too movement, but I have to delve into this because uh, it's really what this is about. So in response to the Me Too movement, California enacted Civil Code Section 1670.11, and if it looks like I'm reading for something, I absolutely am. I need that to remember the section code. Uh, so this section of the law that was recently enacted put a new duty on attorneys who were drafting these sorts of settlement agreements with non-disclosure agreements inside to include certain language designed to put a victim on notice about certain rights they had, notwithstanding or you know, despite the non-disclosure agreement. For example, they still have the right to talk to the police or to give testimony outside of just a court, but even uh, in front of a legislative body, for example. Well, you could say this was legalese, but it's the law. And Jeffrey Starr's lawyers, the law firm of Gibson Dunn, failed to include this legalese in their settlement agreement. Now, why am I harping on this? Well, this can have major consequences. I'm not a licensed attorney, and I don't want to go into too much detail about what exactly those consequences could be, but it's possible it could toss out some or even all of the NDA. And that's why that's such a big deal. Because tossing out the NDA basically frees everyone. Because in theory, they also got paid not just for keeping the hush money and you know, not talking about everything, they got paid for retracting their statement. So that portion of the agreement is still valid and good. And, you know, it kind of is a nice closure to this. They sent insider their retraction and they got paid. One time transaction, one time transaction. Tossing out this NDA still preserves that. So that's why this is a major mistake on the part of Gibson Dunn, Jeffrey's high-priced law firm, all right? Major mistake that could even get them not just embarrassment, but trouble with the bar for not including this statutorily required language. Gibson Dunn, more like Gibson Dunn goofed. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just I can't help it. Okay, everyone, that's all for now, but I promise I've got more coming. Like everyone else, I'm a human being. I am going to dip out for the holidays, but I'm going to come roaring back after the New Year's. I might drop a little bit of drama here and there. Nothing major, probably. Uh, do keep checking back on stickydrama.com because remember, 
the original is the best.